Hey, what's going on everybody? In today's video, I want to quickly go over a new game that just released on Steam called Incursion Red River. The trailer for it did drop a couple weeks ago, however, it did come out on Steam Early Access on April 10th. And uh, over the weekend, I put about five hours of gameplay into it. Not too much, but I did want to go over my first impressions with you guys and let you know what I think about the game. So if you've ever played Escape from Tarkov, this game is pretty similar. Actually, a lot of the elements from Escape from Tarkov you actually can find in this game. However, the biggest difference in this game is that Incursion focuses on solo and cooperative gameplay and does not have any PvP elements in it at all. If you're anything like me, that's awesome news. Uh, I personally tried getting to Tarkov a few times over the years and uh, I just couldn't really get into it to be honest. For me, I think the biggest drawback was the PvP element of it. I mean, I love PvP in games, but with Tarkov specifically, I just felt like I ran into a lot of cheaters, um, just a lot of unfairness overall. Uh, I didn't like how, you know, some people could be wearing a crazy amount of armor and could take like ridiculous amount of uh, amount of damage until they go down. But honestly, the biggest part of it for me was uh, the wipes. So, you know, unless you were spending hours and hours and hours in Tarkov, you were bound to get left behind by people who were grabbing like the best gear and uh, you would just get destroyed by them and then you'd pretty much have to wait for a new wipe until, you know, you had a clean slate. But I didn't want to put that much time into Tarkov, so um, looking for a casual extraction shooter that, you know, had the same elements of Tarkov was something that I've kind of been wanting the last few years. So when it comes to the gameplay and incursion, um, essentially it's kind of the same. You enter a raid, you have the option to complete missions for different factions for the different PMCs. You know, you collect gear, loot, and you extract. If you die, you lose everything that was with you on that raid, so that includes everything you brought, plus everything that was in your inventory when you died. If you don't want to risk any of your gear, or if you just don't really have any good gear to bring with you on a raid, you can actually use provided loadouts. These are basically loadouts that a faction of a PMC will provide for you for that specific mission that you're assigned to. The drawback on this is when the raid ends, you don't actually get to keep anything that you collected during the raid. Uh, you basically have to forfeit all the stuff that you picked up and then plus give back the loadout to the faction. So the only thing that you can bring back with you are basically the mission rewards if you complete that faction mission. Each faction offers different types of rewards and has different motivations in the overall story. However, the story is pretty bare bones at the moment. Completing missions raises your reputation for the faction that assigned it to you, and increasing your faction reputation actually unlocks more rare items that you can buy from the trader. So for example, the VLF is the Vietnam-based PMC, and basically they give you more options for Eastern weapons and attachments like the AK, whereas the UICS is more of a Western PMC, and they give you more things for like the M4 or the SCAR, for example. Currently, there are three different types of missions that you can accept from these factions. So they're all kind of intel retrieval and sabotage based. So there's one where you have to plant bugs in certain areas, um, plant bombs in different areas, and then also grabbing one piece of intel and moving it to another part of the map. There's not a huge variety of missions right now, but you know, like I said, we're still very early on into the development, so we expect to see more in the future. That's basically it when it comes to the gameplay loop at the moment, uh, so for now, I do want to go over some pros and cons I have with the game. When it comes to the pros, I think this was a really great alternative to Escape from Tarkov, um, especially if you're looking for something that is more revolving around the single player and co-op parts of an extraction shooter. Um, again, you don't have to worry about any PvP stuff, that is something they have specifically said they don't plan on adding at all. This is very much a single player and co-op focused shooter. One of the really big things for me as well is that there is no need to be constantly online. So you can play this completely offline even if you didn't have an internet connection, which I think is absolutely amazing. You know, in a world where gaming is like chronically online now, it's such a breath of fresh air to be able to do something offline and not have to worry about your progress being controlled by an online server. Another pro is that this is a pretty casual extraction shooter experience. Um, I kind of want to be careful with the word casual because I don't mean that in the sense that it's not like hardcore or realistic or anything like that because it definitely is. Uh, I more so mean like you don't have to worry about what the meta is because I have to fight players who have better gear than me and or anything like that. So um, it's very much like you can play at your own pace and you don't have to worry too much about having like the best loadouts to beat other people or anything like that. So. I think that is a huge, huge win. 
even with how early the game is in development right now, again, it's in pre-alpha, um, there's a pretty good, healthy amount of weapons, attachments, and items variety. Um, also, there's a lot of replayability right now, even though there's only one map available at the moment, and uh, we'll, we'll go over that in a, in a second here. When it comes to presentation, I think the game looks great. It's running on Unreal Engine 5, you know, lighting, shadows, uh, the amount of stuff that's on the screen. I think it's at a really good place right now, and I'm really excited to see what it'll look like as it gets improved upon. And for me, I think the biggest pro overall is that the development team actually communicates really well with the community. Um, you know, the game has been out for a few days, and uh, the dev team have released hotfixes that have been pretty quick, um, fixing some of the biggest, like, issues that we've had for the past few days. Um, and yeah, it's just, it seems like they're really dedicated to fixing all these issues and providing the community with the game they actually want. So I think that is probably the biggest pro of all. So let's talk about the cons. Uh, honestly, I don't really have a huge list for this right now, um, mostly because of how early the game is in development. It'd be pretty stupid to compare it to something that is already, you know, fully released and is at a 1.0 version of itself. Uh, whereas this is, again, very, very early pre-alpha. However, with that being said, that could be a huge con to somebody who is looking to dive into this fully. Um, there's just not a lot of content there right now. Um, you know, like I mentioned, there's a, there's a good amount of weapon variety. Um, however, there is only currently one map, some parts of that map kind of have not so great textures, uh, some of the model work is kind of sketchy, like you can see through some of the cliffs in some parts. Um, so you know, if that is something that is going to bother you a lot, uh, this probably isn't the right time to jump into this game. Right now the AI is also fairly simplistic. Um, I think they provide like a good enough challenge and you know, especially if you ramp up the difficulty or even put in like custom difficulty settings, uh, you can have a really good time. Yeah, but at the moment they're, they're not anything that is revolutionary or anything like that. I'm hoping in the future that the AI does get better and provides more of a challenge and makes them feel a little bit more human. Uh, but for where they're at right now, I don't think they're terrible by any means. Now when it comes to bugs, uh, there's a pretty good variety of them out there in this game right now. Um, some pretty minor, some kind of major. Uh, some of the minor ones are like shadows being rendered a little weird on your player character, or uh, you know, textures flickering in and out. Uh, probably the worst one I've seen personally on the Discord uh, was people's save files getting like corrupted and deleted because they crashed the desktop or something like that. Um, some of those guys were kind of far along in their progress and then you know, having to start from square one with like the most basic gear probably doesn't feel the greatest, so I'd say that's probably the worst one I've seen so far. But you know, like I said, these things are bound to happen with how early uh, the game is in development right now. However, again, the dev team is very quick in communicating and is always trying to provide solutions to uh, the players, so I think that's great. The last con I have is a very personal one. Um, I'm kind of an audiophile, so I, I do a lot of music and stuff outside of this. One of the biggest things that has bugged me since uh, playing this game is the audio mixing. The biggest part of the mixing that has bothered me personally are the gunshots. The gunshots aren't really that loud in my opinion, um, you know, even something that isn't suppressed. The AK for example, unsuppressed, it sounds good, but it's kind of quiet because when you reload the weapon, it, like to me, it almost sounds like the actual reloading sound effects are almost as loud as the gunshot, which is really weird and jarring. Um, and then like, when I did put a suppressor on my AK, the gun overall just got quieter and then it, it just it just felt weird. And another example of the audio mixing being kind of off is the voice lines coming from the AI. So the AI actually do like talk while they're walking around, um, not necessarily to each other, they're just kind of saying voice lines. Uh, but there are times where they will say something and it sounds like to me they're on the other side of the wall. And then I check the corner and check the wall and they're actually not there, they're actually further away. So like the voice lines sound like they're close, but they're really not. And then there are other times where like their voices sound closer than their footsteps. So I might hear someone say something, but they're actually far away. But by the time they do get close to me, I don't really hear them coming and they end up shooting me by surprise. So it's little things like that that I think can be improved on, but I'm sure that's something they'll look into in the future. Overall though, ignoring me nitpicking really hard on the audio mixing, um, you know, with how early the game is in its development right now, I think the foundation and structure is really solid, and I think if they keep working on it, this game has huge, huge, huge potential in the tactical shooter community. They keep this positive trend up. 
Right now the game's on sale on Steam for $13.59 until April 22nd, and then after that it goes up to $16.99 retail. For the price point, I think the price is worth it if you want to support the ongoing development of the game into the future, otherwise it might not be worth it for some people at the moment, which is totally understandable. There's not a whole lot of content like I mentioned earlier. Um, but if this is a project that you believe in and you feel like this is something that you'd really enjoy later down the road as it gets more polished out, uh, I would recommend maybe waiting a few months and, you know, seeing where the updates take it and then going from there. However, I will say you can do a lot worse with the price tag that they are asking for. So that's all I'll say about it. <laughs> Alright guys, that concludes today's video on Incursion Red River. Wrapping up, I really like the game so far. I think it's going in a really good direction and, you know, I believe in the project. I, I see that the dev team is trying really hard when it comes to providing the game that the community actually wants. And uh, yeah, I think this game could be absolutely huge in the future and I'm really excited to see where it goes. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one.